Hi, I'm Sue Jackson of the Book by Book blog, and I'm here with another Friday Reads. I am still immersed in Big Book Summer, the challenge that I host every year. Um, it's in its 11th year, and you can still join the fun. Um, it's only early August, so there's a full month left if you would like to fit in a big book or two before the end of the summer. Um, a big book for the challenge is just any book with 400 or more pages. Any genre, any type, it all counts, and you set your own goals. The way I like to do big book summer is to read bigger books all summer long, on audio, in print. This is what I devote my summer to. And it helps me to clear some of these bigger books from my shelves and get to the books that I've been meaning to read but keep putting off because they're a little bit bigger. So this is going to be kind of a quick update because I'm still reading the books I was reading last week um, and the week before. I think I started them the week before, but I'm just about finished and ready to move on to a new book probably by tonight or tomorrow. I am very close to the end of The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck, and I have absolutely loved rereading this book. I read it for the first time in 10th grade, which was a very long time ago. So I remembered the basic plot, but not any of the details. And I remember liking it in high school, but Wow, it has just completely blown me away this time through, reading it as an adult. Obviously, it's John Steinbeck. It's beautifully written, but he's also so clever in the way he's written it. In case you're not familiar with it, it is the story of one family, the Jodes, who are living in Oklahoma and working as sharecroppers. They should be owning their land fairly soon because they've been working very hard at it. Um, and instead, they are kicked off their land by the owners. And along with many other people, they have no choice but to load up everything they own into, in this case, a homemade truck and head west because they've heard that there's work in California, that there's farm work available in California. So, but what Steinbeck has done here that's so clever is it is the intimate story of the Jode family, and you get to know them very well here. Twelve of them um, set off for the West, all crammed into that homemade truck. Um, but Steinbeck intersperses the chapters about the Jodes with short chapters about what's going on with all of the migrants because they were part of a a huge historical movement um, out west during the Dust Bowl of the 1930s that affected the, the middle part of the United States. And so it's the story of a family, but it's also the story of what is happening historically, culturally. This is just such a huge change in that part of the world. And so you get some chapters that give you a wider view and help you to understand that this isn't just the Jodes, that there were hundreds of thousands of families joining them, all heading west, many of them on Route 66, trying to find work, any work, at any price. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm almost finished with it now, so I'm getting to, once they get to California, of course, things are not easy. It is not the paradise they've been led to believe. Um, a lot of smaller farms are going under, being taken over by large corporations, just like they are back in Oklahoma. And the pay for migrant farm workers for picking the fruits and vegetables and cotton are not enough to live on, not even enough to feed your family, let alone 
anything else. So um, it is, of course, there are sections of it that are horrifying. Um, it is gritty and real, but Steinbeck also keeps making me laugh. Um, last night, my husband was laughing at me because, you know, on one page, I'm going, no, no, no. And he's like, you know, talking to it isn't going to help. And then on the very next page, I'm laughing out loud. Um, he's an amazing writer. And I had forgotten that over the intervening decades. I definitely want to read more Steinbeck when I'm done with this. In the meantime, I'm right at the end and absolutely loving The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. And when I finish that tonight or tomorrow morning, I am going to dive into The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. I have been dying to read this book. A Gentleman in Moscow was tied for my number one book of the year in 2021. Absolutely loved it. It made me cry. It made me laugh out loud. I wrote down pages and pages of um, excerpts in my quote journal. And so I've been really looking forward to the Lincoln Highway, which I think I got as a gift from my husband um, for Christmas. Um, I'm doing this, I've been waiting because I'm reading this as a buddy read with Nikki of Red Dot Reads. So check out her channel as well. I'll include it in the links below. And um, just can't wait to read this. So Nikki and I are going to be buddy reading it in the early part of August. Now, besides reading big books in print all summer long, I am also listening to big books on audio all summer long. And I currently have two going. My husband and I had two trips in the last two weekends, um, a family camping trip with our sons, our grown sons, and last weekend, a longer trip to my hometown, Rochester, New York, for a family wedding, which was wonderful. Um, so we started a, a book for the car. Now, my husband really likes mysteries and thrillers, so if we're gonna listen to a book in the car, that's usually what I choose. This time I chose First Cut, by Judy Melanac and TJ Mitchell. And this is, well, it was new when it came out. I've got quite a backlog of audiobooks. This book was released in 2020, and it was book one of a new series featuring a medical examiner named Dr. Jesse Tesca, um, who at the beginning of this book leaves her job in LA and there's a, a short prologue that gives us a glimpse into what happened. Someone showed up on her Emmy table that upset her enough to leave the job. And now it's several months later, she's moved to San Francisco where her brother lives, and she's taken a job with the Emmy's office in San Francisco. Dr. Tesca um, is something of a rookie. She hasn't been at it for too long. Um, but here in San Francisco, she is responsible both for performing autopsies and for teaching um, some medical students from the local university. So Jessie is thrown right into the job, in the new job in San Francisco. Um, she lands a homicide right off, uh, appears to be a gang murder over drugs, um, multiple bullet wounds. So she's looking into that, um, doing the autopsy, helping the investigators. She's also getting other assignments at, along the way. Um, she's seeing some drug overdoses, including one that she has a feeling is not really accidental, but her bosses are pushing her to close the case and to move it forward rule it as accidental and move on. Nobody wants it to be ruled a homicide because that's a whole lot of extra work. Um, and she's also seen a case where um, a drug mule, a woman was dead um, because of being a drug mule. 
So some of the autopsy scenes are a bit graphic in this. My husband and I are riding in the car and just looking at each other like, ooh. <laughs> Um, but it, it's been very good so far. And those three cases, she's got lots of cases, dozens, but those three cases kind of form the basis for this novel. And little by little, Dr. Tesca is starting to fear that there's more going on than meets the eye initially. Um, so we're very much enjoying First Cut by Judy Melanek and TJ Mitchell. The only problem is we've got a few chapters left and we're back home right now with no more car trips planned. So we'll have to find time to listen to that together at home. And my second audiobook that I'm listening to right now is just for myself, and that is The Secrets Between Us by Thridi Umrigar. Now this is a sequel to her best-selling The Space Between Us, um, a wonderful novel that I loved, everyone in my book group loved it. And that first novel focused on the relationship between a servant and the woman she works for, the more wealthy woman she works for in India. So it focused very much on the caste system, on the differences um, between the classes and how they're treated. The Secrets Between Us picks up where that book left off, no spoilers, um, and focuses in on the servant from the first book, Bhima. And now she is no longer working for Sarah, the woman from the first book, and she's looking for ways to support herself and her granddaughter, Maya. Um, they live in the slums, and Bhima's goal is to support her granddaughter to not only help her grow up healthy, she's a young adult now, um, but also to support her through college so that she can graduate, get a good paying job, and move out of the slums. Um, so that's the focus of this book. There are new characters introduced. I was immediately immersed back into this world. Bhima is a wonderful central character, um, complex, She's got difficult challenges that she's facing, um, but here, for the first time in her life, um, she is possibly making some friends, some real friends. And the class differences are still highlighted here, but in different ways, um, very much enjoying The Secrets Between Us by Thridi Umrigar. And that's what I'm reading this week. I would love to hear what you're reading this weekend. Please let me know in the comments down below.